we're back, Chuck. I, yes. I'm back in your face. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm here for you. I, I'm here for you. I appreciate it. I like it. I like it. I like you on my face. I, I, <laughs> my face becomes a lot smarter when you're in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People actually see me. They say, I That sounds weird, but yeah. I think it's a compliment. <laughs> happened your face looks smarter <laughs> was Neil deGrasse Tyson in your face recently <laughs> yeah man yeah the world is changing everybody's going to electricity if we're all you know electrifying hey man, cars and everything I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm totally about it because mm -hmm. you're talking about maybe upgrading the grid we're talking about electric cars we're talking mm -hmm. about uh public transportation systems and all right. of this supposedly is a uh, going to minimize you know our carbon emissions but here's the mm -hmm. thing yeah electricity what is i mean aren't we burning fossil fuels to get electricity yeah yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> that's the whole concept of a coal-fired power plant yeah, that's, uh, you know, I'm just saying that's a little ugly. That's kind of like, I'm not on drugs anymore. I used to have a terrible heroin problem. Well, what are you doing now? Morphine. You know, it's like, I mean, I'm happy for you, but I'd rather you not be on any drugs at all. And I don't know if you've ever visited one of these coal-fired power plants. So they have train tracks, many of them, have train tracks that are right alongside the power plant. And the yes. coal cars drive, each car is filled with coal like to the brim, yes. you know, it's convex on top. Yes. And they and they line up against these huge bins, these vats, out of, there's a, surely a, an official word for it. And then the coal cars just tip sideways and all the coal drops into these hoppers and then they write themselves back up and the train goes about its way. And then the coal drops in, it gets pulverized and then burned instantaneously. Right, you know, you think of charcoal briquettes in your fire, and it, oh, yeah. how come it won't light? And, and then finally, lights and it stays lit. Forever. Imagine taking, imagine taking that briquette and completely pulverizing it into powder. That's not cool. And <laughs> then inject it into a furnace. It burns instantly. Yeah, and and super hot too. And yeah. super hot, exactly. So that's what's going on there. Why delay the energy you need in this moment? Anyhow, so so that's an important question. What's going on here? So last numbers I looked, I think about two thirds of all electrical power is supplied by some kind of fossil fuel. Yeah. So if I'm gonna say, let me not drive my car with a combustion engine, let me plug it in. Yeah, the car has no emissions, right? It's just running on a battery, but maybe the emissions are just, just someplace else. Transferred. Transferred to the power plant. So. Uh, let me just tell you the, the, the bigger story that's going on here, okay? So um, <laughs> I'm going to base some of this on, uh, there was a book published back in 2009. The book is called Turning Oil into Salt. It was published in 2009. Let me get their author's name here, Anne Corrin and Gail Luft. And let me just share with you some perspectives there. And I've forever changed for having read their book. All right. Uh, do you know how much salt costs? Um, I think it's a dollar ten for a giant thing. Um, okay, so you unless you, you, it's kosher, in which case it's a little more. <laughs> unless it's Himalayan salt, which is a or little more Himalayan, <laughs> which is a little more and pink and delicious. <laughs> okay, but salt. You're not budgeting for your salt purchase, no, you right? Don't. You're not thinking. My gosh, we got to run out and get salt. Nor do you really think or care, not to do your thinking and caring for you, but I'm betting you're not wondering where your salt came from, unless it says it explicitly and it's a gourmet fact. It's not a sort of strategic fact. You're not saying, if you're not buying some Morton salt and say, gee, where did the salt come from? You're not. I hope, I hope this is fair trade salt. <laughs> I know. You're just yeah. not. Yeah, you don't care. You're not. However, you go back 150 years, you knew to the penny how much you were paying for your salt. You knew where it was coming from. You would not be caught without it because salt was a strategic commodity. It was strategic because salt was necessary to survive the winter when you were storing your, 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 your harvested crops right. so that you can l not die before your next harvest and your next right. access to food. Right. Strategic. Commodity. Uh, uh, what is it called? A preservative. Yeah. 
A preservative. Thank you. It was a preservative. All right. Uh, and by the way, uh, Grant in the Civil War bombed the Southern supplies of salt as a, as a strategic move to try to get them to surrender sooner, realizing they wouldn't be able to survive the winter. So that's how important salt is. And in fact, if you if you dig up an early episode of Star Talk before we were even video, we had a guy who wrote a whole book on salt, and it was one of the more fascinating episodes ever of Star Talk. All right, and that's when you learn that the very word salary comes from the word the Latin word for salt, and in ancient Rome they would pay soldiers in salt. Wow, what a suck ass job it was to be a <laughs> Roman soldier. <laughs> Oh my God! I just spent eight months out in a battle, risking my damn life, bar- fighting these barbarians, and now here I am back, and they handed me a bag of salt. Literal barbarians! You're fighting the literal barbarians. I'm fighting the literal barbarians, and you paid me in a bag of salt. You so wait, wait till your next paycheck from Star Talk before you talk. Um, Star Talk will pay you in pepper. <laughs> But don't worry, it's full peppercorns. <laughs> so, okay. so here's the thing. So what happens over the decades? You, we, Oh, wait a minute, we figure out how to can food. Right. Right? Canning becomes a way to preserve it. And then it goes well beyond just the winter, because canning you can can for years. Uh, what else? Oh, refrigeration. Once we electrified cities, even before we electrified cities, the, there's the ice box, right? Once you could refrigerate food, once transportation channels became efficient and quicker, that reduced the time between production of the food and when you consumed it. So all of this meant that salting foods was no longer the strategic act necessary for you to not die over the winter. Hmm. And so salt just became just something else in the grocery list. Right. And not something you had to have for your survival. You used right. to be hot salt, no longer. <laughs> no. Now, it's, s- now it's Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today, you know where our oil comes from. Yes. You, wars are fought over oil. That's right. When the price of oil changes, it makes headlines in the news. That's right. Because your car runs on oil and on nothing else. So yeah. your car has no choice. You have to buy the product that your car runs on, and you don't control all the access to that product that makes it a strategic asset. Right. Okay. So. The car really just needs power. Does that power have to come from gasoline? No, it can come from some other source. All right, so now, hmm, suppose I turn my combustion engine car into an electric car. So now I'm not putting oil into it, gasoline into it. I take it and I plug it in. Yep. Chuck, when you plug things into the wall, I don't care what, a toaster, your hair dryer, whatever, uh, do you use a hairdryer? Probably not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, but I do bathe with a toaster when things get bad. <laughs> <All right. laughs> You've clearly forgotten to plug it in every time you yeah. took a bath with him. <laughs> Damn, so, that's what I'm doing wrong. That's what you're doing wrong. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay. They never tell you that. But this is yeah. it. Never bathe with a toaster. And you did the experiment and that's it was no problem. I was like, I don't get the I don't get the big deal. Dude, every time I take a bath, the toaster's right here with me. I have the cleanest toaster in the world. <laughs> so you plug things into the wall. Are you asking yourself, I wonder what kind of power this is? Are you are you even wondering what it costs you? It's actually relatively cheap. All right? Is, yeah. Relative. I mean, compared to other things you spend money on, it's it's so cheap that if you're driving away and you realize, I left I left the living room light on. Are you going to stop the car, turn around, and go back and turn out the light, and then continue to your dinner? No, you just say I'll, I'll turn it out when, when I, I go to sleep. To, when I get home, right? That's how casual we are about this. So you plug it into the wall. You don't know what produced that energy. It could be coal, could be uh, oil, it could be uh, hydro, it could be solar panels, it could be nuclear, it could be tidal. You don't know, and in fact, you don't care. So 
if laws change, if we run out of oil, if we, whatever goes on in the energy marketplace doesn't have to concern you, the power company says, I will now generate power from wind, uh, from, from solar, from, from hydro. By the way, wind and hydroelectric are both solar powered, right? The yeah. sun evaporates ocean water and that moves on land it comes out as rain to a, some high lake you dam that or a river you dam that and then you have hydro power uh, and of course wind power is the uneven heating of earth's surface causing wind movement so so solar panels wind and hydro are all solar power okay so the the electric company if the price of oil goes high let's swap in more solar if we outlaw coal they put bring in hydro but bring in nuclear whatever else it is they're not beholden to oil to create power that comes out of your wall socket so if transportation and other things that use combustion engines that have a carbon footprint if they all plug into the wall, you are planting the seeds of a future where we have no dependence on oil whatsoever. All right. I just, well, I like that. And we would have turned oil into salt. Nice. Uh, except I am not putting oil on my French fries. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no, because you boil them in oil. That's what... <laughs> Exactly. Right. No, you're not putting crude I'm, oil on your French yeah, fries. I was going to say, I'm not putting 10 W40 or, uh, you know, or uh, oh, so, some, some uh, was light, sweet, crude. I'm not, I'm not going light, sweet, crude on my French fries. <laughs> so this is just some of the sort of backdrop of what's going on with electricity. Yeah. And uh, one of the great challenges before we land this plane here is uh, one great advantage that oil gasoline has over these other forms of energy is I can take a bucket of gas mm -hmm. and I can move it from like here to there. Right. And just leave it available to me when I need it. When I need it. Okay. Right. Whereas solar power, you don't, there's no, unless you stored that in a battery. Right. And then carry the battery around. The actual act of collecting solar power uh, is not the same as storing it and transporting it. Absolutely. So if you don't have a way to store the solar power, you only get to use it while it's no, coming down. While it's happening. So there's still some challenges, you know, plus batteries are like 150 year old technology. All right. And uh, uh, Volta was one of the first who sort of pioneered a good version of a battery. And of course, we named Volts after him. Uh, right. But so, so there's still challenges to making this work in its fullest expression. But I'm just saying the sun is handing you free energy every sunny day of the year. And to just let it go to waste while we are burning fossil fuels, warming the earth is a travesty. And so we need to put our brain power where in ways, apply our brain power in ways that can represent us as good shepherds of our own civilization. So that generations to come will be proud of what we have done for them rather than ashamed. Yes, excellent, excellent. I we gotta call it. it quits there, Chuck. All right, all right. So that's a, so some Earth Day uh, perspectives for you. I like it. All right. Absolutely. All right. Happy Earth Day. Ha happy Earth Day to everybody. And uh, uh, let's let's look forward to the day when we don't need a freaking Earth Day <laughs> because yeah. Earth is just fine and our relationship with it is stellar. See what I did there? That would be great. Yes. And it would be. I saw what you did there. Mm -hmm. You saw what I did there. Uh -huh. All right. This has been a, a, a Star Talk explainer video all about electrical power. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, bidding you to keep looking up.